Uh, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility in Export, Pennsylvania. And according to Mike, who our producer, and the airwaves everywhere. So today, what we're in every week, what we attempt to do is put forth a topic of interest, something that you can implement in your life that would be productive and beneficial. And I am, as always, Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... Robin, I'm a physician assistant student from Chatham University. And on my right would be... I am Vivek and I'm a medical school graduate from India. Tell me, Robin, did you find that awkward? A little bit, yes. Did I? Yep. <laughs> a little bit awkward? Yes. So what what was what what did we do that was awkward? Sat in silence. We sat in silence. We Same sat thing. in silence. Yeah. So the purpose of today's podcast is to talk about the power of silence, the power and the meaning of silence. Uh, today when I was discussing it with you, Vivek, you were talking to me, I asked you if there was silence in your life and you told me no. Yes. Could you say a little bit more about that? I want silence in my life, but it's very difficult to be silent uh, because uh, our mind is very active and it's never allow us to be a silent. And when when I try, I try to be silent, but my mind doesn't want, want me to let me do that. So what you're saying, it's not necessarily the music, the radio playing, or the television, or cars blowing their horns. A lot of the, the chatter is between your ears. Yes. Okay, great. Great. So, and quite often that's influenced by the, by the culture, the culture that we live in, Robin. Could you talk a little bit about our culture, please? Um, yes, our culture is all based upon um, interactions with others and it's never stopped because we have constant access to everybody with our cell phones and our Facebook and our internet and to and I think people are afraid of the silence they're afraid to just sit and listen to what other people have to say and so I think it becomes difficult for us to accept that silence even like we did here with our podcast where silence is not a common thing that's interesting when you started to talk about fearing the silence, fearing silence. Tell me to say a little bit more about that, Robin. Um, I think silence just makes us uncomfortable, um, even in a sense of when we're home by ourselves, a lot of times silence is frightening. So we'll do things like put on music or put the TV on in the background just so there isn't silence and it makes us feel more comfortable. Isn't silence, uh, and when we get uncomfortable, when we're silent and everything shut off, then we have to deal with ourselves. Yes. So quite often what we do is when we get attached to the loud music or the television playing. When the, Have you ever heard someone, when they have their television on, that they call it background noise? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. And some people can't sleep without the television on? Mm -hmm. Okay. So quite often what happens is, is that we have failed to develop the relationship with ourselves enough that we're comfortable with our own thoughts and comfortable with being alone by mm -hmm. ourselves, is it not? For sure. And with the technology, we have access to every single thing that happens all over the world instantaneously, mm -hmm. is it not? And sometimes, Vic, well, we feel that we're obligated to be plugged in at all times. Yeah. And when we're plugged in, is, is it silence? No. So, and, and again, some people associate silence with, with, well, absence of noise, okay? Like we were talking about today, when you were, you were working on your computer screen, mm -hmm. you were doing that. Would you call that silence? No. Talk more about that, Vivek. Silence is uh, completely absent of uh, mind, and uh, nothing in, inside your mind. Your mind is free of any thought, and uh, you can relax, and you can feel it silence. Absolutely. So when we talk about meditation and when we talk about mindfulness, we often ask people to look for the space between their thoughts. Tell me, Robin, is there any space between your thoughts? Right now, no. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there ever? Um, I mean, there are if I'm doing certain activities where I can just kind of let everything go. Uh, 
um, I was, we were talking earlier about how I um, have picked up a hobby of crocheting for my mother and that I found is a rather cathartic type thing. I sit and I just focus on that and it's just what I'm doing and I'm not worrying about everything else that's going on. It's just, I'm in that moment and so I usually feel better when I'm done with that. Absolutely. So when we talk about one of the DBT skills of interpersonal relationship, uh, Vivek, what we talk about is there's two, two important parts. There's two important parts of communication, speaking and listening. Could you, could you say a little bit more about that? Hearing and listening are different. Hearing is simply perceive is a sound and while listening is actively com uh, comprehending the things that uh, are bring here. So we're trying to differentiate between hearing and listening. Could you talk a little bit more about that? So just hearing. Hearing is, you know, we all hear. We all can just sit and be in the room and perceive what's going on, but to actually be involved with what's being heard. It's like those times when you're in a conversation or a meeting and you're just kind of sitting there daydreaming. You hear the noises, but you don't necessarily comprehend what's being said until all of a sudden you hear your name and you're asked a question. You're like, what? What are they talking about? As compared to when you're actually listening and being aware of whether it's in a meeting or just a conversation with a friend, actually knowing what they're saying and having thoughts developed towards what they're saying. Vivek, tell me how you can tell when someone is listening to you. What, what's their, what, how are they generally acting? How, when someone is listening to you. Are they looking at their watch? Yes. Or playing with their phone when they're listening to you, when they're really listening. Mm -hmm. when, they're, when they're listening to what you say, they're comprehending what you say. Generally, they're not playing with their watch, or they're not playing with their phone, or looking up in the air, or rolling their eyes. Uh, so tell me, tell me when you feel the difference between hearing and listening when you're in a conversation with a friend. Um, when I know someone is truly listening, they're acknowledging what I say, even if it's just with a simple head nod or changes in facial expression, um, you know, words of understanding like I understand or I see or tell me more. That Those show me that the person's actually listening to what I'm saying as compared to being on the phone going, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, whatever, yeah. Do we always need to respond to someone? No. Do we always need to respond? Sometimes silence is a, is a more effective way of communication. When someone comes to you and tells you some tragic news, that let's say someone close to them has crossed over, some pet or some very important part of their life is gone, uh, sometimes we feel the need that we, we want to sympathize with people and we want to tell them that it's okay. Quite often, silence is the best way to do yeah, that. Yeah, it's better for the sorrow, grief, and some kind of anger. The silence is better over at the time. Absolutely. So when someone's anger, w angry with you, uh, is it best to respond? When you're invited to an argument party, do you have to attend? No, you do not. No, you do not. And sometimes the best gift to bring is silence. Yes. The best, the best gift to bring to a conversation, the best, best gift to bring to a gathering is silence. So could you talk a little bit about some of the, if I have some examples to use silence, Robin? Um, well, one of the examples is what you just mentioned uh, during an argument. Uh, sometimes if you're in an argument when there is no silence and you're just saying everything that comes to mind, you can say things that you may regret, that may be hurtful. So bringing silence can actually offer a moment for not only yourself but for the other party to stop and think and kind of come back down from the heat of the moment. So quite often, Vivek, what happens is when someone is arguing with us and we're silent, what that does is we take the power away from them, do we not? Yes. So what silence does is take power away from an argument. Yeah. Would you, would you agree? Yes. Okay. So talk a little bit more about some of the examples. Uh, let's talk about gossiping. Uh, and try and stop uh, yourself from catching the virus of gossiping and use the power of silence whenever it's occur. So when come when someone comes to you and they say, guess what I know about so and so, and if you're and what what normally what do we say? What? <laughs> what you hear? So if you're so if you offer so if you offer that with silence, tell me, tell me what would go on. It would stop the gossip. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what we're talking about is silence being a tool, are we not, Vivek? Yes. 
So quite often we, we want to use words as a tool. Mm -hmm. And quite often silence can, can be just, just as effective. Mm -hmm. So talk about, talk about a quiet type of uh, reflection with silence. Um, in, what, in what way? Like... So, so with quiet reflection with silence, it's that moment to sit and just think about nothing and to just take in what's around you and to appreciate, um, you know, the quiet. And we're surrounded by noise all the time. I noticed one day I was walking outside and we were supposed to be quiet and it was an exercise you're supposed to be doing here. And it was almost impossible because next thing you know, there's a car driving by or there was some sort of machinery I heard. And so it's really just important to focus on the beauty of the silence because this world is never silent. So in ending this podcast, we're going to have a Seclair challenge. We're going to ask you that when the next time that in your house and your house is empty to have a completely silent home. And having a completely silent home does not mean that you're alone. Uh, it means that you're alone with yourself. An excellent time to start that relationship with yourself and begin to build it up. Reflect on your day and project about what we want to happen in the day ahead. To set an intention. To set an intention in, in silence. So as a Often, I uh, will ask uh, Miss Robin to share with the individuals how they can offer comments, questions, and or criticisms. So, to continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter under Seclair Life. You can also find this in other ground rounds on youtube.com backslash Seclair video and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And please visit www.seclair.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. And as always, Vivek, we offer a free prescription in every podcast. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, yes. we fish without bait. A life without expectations. So until the next time, as always, your assignment is to be good to yourself, and your Seclair challenge for the week is to have a silent home and start that reflection and time with yourself. Remember, silence is a tool that can be a powerful gift. Until next time, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.